Thank you. Thank you, Ian. And thank you so much, Annabelle. I'm just uh, sharing a few slides here with you, so just bear with me, bear with me. Here we go. So hopefully you can see this. And as with Ian, as with everyone who's gone before me, I'd like to say a huge thank you to Ian for setting us off on our journey through Ephesians with that wonderful picture of the Lion King. Today we're going to be thinking about our individual growth and our collective growth in faith. If you've seen The Lion King, which I know many of us have, or you know the story, you'll be all too aware that as Simba grew up, he had to take on more and more responsibility that he was reluctant to do. He felt unworthy to shoulder this uh, level of responsibility that was put on his shoulders. Without issuing a spoiler alert, as the film goes on, as the story progresses, it becomes apparent that this responsibility is preparing Simba for the day when he will be king. As we grow, our bodies change and develop. To be what they are now, they'll go on continuing, changing and developing to be what they will be in the future. And this is no different with the body of Christ. That too grows and develops and changes over the years. Looking back, we may well be able to pinpoint exactly how that has happened over recent weeks. Together, we've shared in our worship of St Barnabas and All Hallows Church, enjoying perhaps ironically a closeness that we've not known before in the history of our team. But also, over the years, into both worshipping fellowships, we've welcomed many new friends, friends whom God has brought into the church doors, into our life together. We've also had the chance and opportunity and sadness of saying goodbye to other friends too. Friends who have moved on to new places. Friends who sadly have left and we don't know why. And those who have died and gone into glory and now reside and join with us in worship in heaven. Now how do we envisage the body of Christ in our two churches? Changing and growing into the future to take on the responsibility that God is giving us. The image of the church as a body of Christ is an illustration that Paul uses many times in his letters to churches. And he recognises that changes in our bodies naturally occur. 1 Corinthians 13, Paul says, When I was a child, I talked like a child. The other time a man, I've put childish ways behind me. Here Paul could just as easily be referring to the physical changes to his body, his voice deepening and a new way of thinking that comes with age, rather than simply comparing himself as an adult to that of the body of a child. But Corinthians and Ephesians isn't the only letter in which he reminds the recipient that the body is a complex and many faceted wonder. In Romans he writes, just as each one of us has a body with many members, so in Christ, we are many who form one body. In Corinthians again, now you who are the body of Christ, and each one of you is a part of it. Writing to people of Colossae, now I rejoice what was suffered for you, for the sake of Christ's body, which is the church. If you ever tried to tie your laces with just one hand, you'll know just how difficult it is. It's complex and it's not an easy task. In fact, it's a task that's made much easier by the use of the other hand too. Two hands working together as those messages of just how to manage the lace ends, intricately weave them together to achieve the neat bow, sent from the head to the fingers and carried out. So too with our life and witness in Christ, the responsibility that we have for his kingdom to work together under his headship. But what is the opposite? What is not working together? Well, continuing with the shoelace analogy. If one of your hands was apathetic rather than physically unable for the tying of your laces, you'd never get out the front door. You'd struggle because both hands need to work together for this task to be completed. When they do, it is accomplished so much quicker. And so it is with our life together in Christ. We're all called to be an active part of it. 
And more than that, we're not just called, but we are gifted to be an active part of it. Not in a part time when we feel like it, capacity, but in a permanent one. Apathy, we learn from this analogy, can have no part in God's church. Abdication of responsibility for someone else to do it has no part to play. Because each one of us is called to be a vital part of Christ's body, and we're all gifted to do so. If each one of us, called and loved by God, does not play our part, then the body of Christ is weakened, tasks do not get done, and the ministry of God is not carried out. We just don't grow together. By and large, we know that God hasn't given us a foot to do the work of a hand. So God doesn't call someone else and equip someone else to carry out the ministry that he's called and equipped you and I to do. And only you can do it in the way that God has called and equipped you to do it. No one else can compare. If we're working together and continually there for one another, but not just when it suits us, supporting each other, we are the whole body of Christ, growing together and growing in love. Or put it another way, in the normal course of events, life pre-COVID, one Wednesday morning when I was due to take the service of Holy Communion, I decided that I wouldn't bother turning up because someone else would do it. The service wouldn't happen on that day because God has called and equipped me for that ministry that day. If one Sunday our musicians decided not to bother coming to church because someone else would be there, we probably wouldn't have music for our service because God had called and equipped that particular individual for music that day. The person who's hosting our Zoom service in the course of our Zoom service worship decided not to bother logging on because someone else might do it. We wouldn't be meeting and we wouldn't be worshipping because God had called and equipped that person for that day and for that service. You in this passage and every passage in Ephesians is a plural you, not just singular. It's a letter that was written to a church to be read out in worship. When we understand it as such, then our interconnectedness with each other cannot be denied. Whilst as illustrated above, God does indeed call you and me as individuals to live a life worthy of the calling that we have received. It's also called you, plural, us, to live a life worthy of the calling that we have collectively received as his people here. A calling to service and ministry, according to humility, gentleness, patience and love, working together as we can see here. Because when we do all work together for God's church, living the life that we collectively have been called to, using the gifts and the skills that God has given each one of us, if as prophets and evangelists, pastors, teachers and preachers, apostles, we will grow closer to Christ, who is our head. The head of the body, and ahead of all things, because as Paul reminds the people of Ephesus, from him the whole body joined together and held together grows. Every supporting ligament builds itself up in love as each part does its work. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you that you do call and equip each one of us to your service. Help us to respond to that call. Help us to grow in love and fellowship together here on earth. That your kingdom in this place and in heaven may grow. Strengthen us for all that lies ahead, for those tasks that we know about and for those that we don't. Knowing that together we work under Christ who is our head. And for his glory we pray. Amen. <laughs>